Today we are going to look at validation with Telerik's RAD grid view, part of Telerik's RAD controls for Silverlight and WPF control suite for .NET XAML development. So before we get started, let's understand what validation events actually are. So they're really meant to support the data validation of user input. They occur when new content entered by a user is about to be committed. As you can see from the image, the country ID should have a value between 0 and 12, yet the user has entered 45. Let's jump into Visual Studio 2010 and see how easy it is to create our own validation using Telerik's RAD grid view. So here we are once again, we're back inside of Visual Studio and we have a RAD grid view added to our application. So if we go ahead and we run this application, uh, you can see that we have about 15 lines of data added for us. And one of the things uh, that we want to add for validation is something for the age. So for example, I doubt anybody in your system is actually going to be 500 years old. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some validation that if a user adds a user that's over uh, say approximately 130 years old that it flags that cell. So let's just go ahead and close out of our Silverlight application and add in that functionality. So the event that we're going to want to use is actually called cell validating. So the cell validating event occurs when a cell is about to commit new content. It's always raised before the cell validated event, which is described in the documentation. So cell validating gives you the power to stop the commit process on a cell before the user enters uh, something that may be harmful to your application. So we'll begin by going to our RAD grid view and we'll just type in cell validating and we'll add a new event handler. So I'm going to switch back to my code behind file and we see that we have a rad review one dot cell validating. So I'm going to begin by adding a little bit of code here. So if e dot cell dot column dot unique name is going to be equal to age, then we're going to create a integer with a new value equals to an int 32.parse e dot new value to string and another if statement here if our new value is less than zero or our new value is greater than 130 then we're just going to raise the e dot is valid equal to false and e dot error message equals the entered value must be between 0 and 130. So now if I run this application and I go back to my age and I try to create uh, somebody with the age of 500 and I press enter then you'll see that we have this little red border around our cell and then we have of course our error message the entered value must be between 0 and 130. So not only uh, do we have a cell validating but we also have a row validating as well. So if I just come back here and I type in row 
validating. We give it an event handler. And just for the sake of the demo, maybe we'll just put this in here, row validating. When we run this application, before that row is committed to a database or whatever, so if I select this row, and before it's committed, so I'm going to click again on this area, you'll see the row validating event occurred. So just as a quick recap, the cell validating event occurs before the cell validated event when the edited cell is about to lose focus. If the focus is moved to a cell in the same row, then no other events occur. If the focus is moved to a cell in another row, then both row validating and row validated are fired, containing the whole row data, including the new and old values of the edited cells. I want to thank you for watching this video and for paying the series. Please tune in to tv.telerik.com for more videos and check out blogs.telerik.com for the latest news and announcements.